Okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our weekly seminar series at the Department of Marine Geosciences at the University of Haifa. Um, today, we are very, very happy to host Dr. Frédéric Kappa from Université Côte d'Azur in France. Um, some, some details about uh, um, Frédéric. He uh, is a professor of uh, geophysics at the University Côte d'Azur, which is in Nice, in France in the GeoAzur Laboratory, an Earth and Planetary Science Lab. After a PhD in rock hydromechanics on the coupling between fluid flow and deformation at the University of Nice, Sofia, and Tripolis in France in 2005, he did a two years postdoc at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in Berkeley, California, in the United States, on the modeling of earthquakes induced by deep CO2 geological storage. In 2007, he held an associate professor position at the Université Côte d'Azur. Then in 2015, he became full professor at the same university. He was also visiting faculty for a year and a half between 2013 and 14 at Caltech in the United States in the Seismon lab to work on induced seismicity. In parallel to his research, he was deputy director, director of Code Geo Azur lab during three years between 2016 and 2019. And he is the currently co-director of a graduate school of physical and engineering sciences. His research aims at the better understanding of the role of fluids in the fault mechanics and the physics of natural earthquakes and injection induced seismicity. He has developed in situ fault activation experiments by fluid injection and hydromechanical modeling, coupling fluid flow, evolution of fault physical properties, and the different fault deformation behavior for the study of earthquakes. Landslide injection induced seismicity and the dynamics of a seismic slip on fault and its interaction with earthquakes. So again, thank you very much, Frederick. And today he's going to talk about fluid driven a seismic slip leading to seismicity during in situ fault activation experiments. So the podium is yours. Thank you very much for this uh, nice introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Nicola for this invitation and the opportunity to, to be here today to present you uh, my research on fluid-induced seismicity. And today I will present you experimental and numerical results on uh, fluid-driven aseismic slip leading to seismicity using uh, both uh, in-situ experiments uh, in the field, but also laboratory experiments uh, at small scale. And finally, uh, I will show you an integration of the lab and uh, field data in a uh, in numerical model. The main uh, motivation for this work uh, comes from the numerous uh, observations uh, worldwide that fluid injection can uh, induce earthquake, but also we know that uh, natural uh, fluid pressure in uh, crystal rocks can also induce earthquake. And one of the most famous uh, examples is the uh, increase of seismicity in uh, central uh, US. Uh, which is um, um, a tectonically stable uh, area where the uh, strain are quite, the natural strain are, are quite low. And as you can see here on this picture, you can see the cumulative number of earthquakes from uh, 1975 to, to nowadays. Uh, and here you can see the blue line correspond to uh, the seismicity rate over time. And you can see here we have a, a, a sort of straight line with a 24 earthquake per year. And uh, around uh, um, 2008, you can see here we have a, an increase of the, uh, oops, excuse me. Oops, no, no. Yeah, we, we have an increase of the earthquake rate uh, with a, a big acceleration here with a 400 uh, uh, earthquake per year. And uh, this um, uh, large increase is associated with uh, a large increase of the fluid injection operation between uh, 0 0.5 and 3 kilometer depth uh, in this region. And here we, are, we, we have a good example that uh, the fluid injection can uh, 
uh, uh, increased uh, seismicity in a table region. This is a direct uh, observation, but we know also from other observations that uh, fluid injection can also induce a seismic slip, uh, which then triggers earthquake. Another interesting example is in California, in Southern California, in Brawley. This is a, a site where we have a, a ge geothermal plant. And here you, you, you can see a, a 3D uh, view of this area with a two, uh, two major faults, one in blue here and one in, in gray here. The blue one is a normal fault and the gray one is a straxial fault. And here you can see a vertical line in red and in blue. And this line corresponds to uh, injection or production well associated with the geothermal uh, stimulation. And what, what's interesting in this study is uh, from observation and modeling, authors uh, showed that uh, the geothermal stimulation increased the fluid pressure in the reservoir and also in the normal fault. And the normal fault mainly slip aseismically, aseismically without uh, any earthquake. But at some point, uh, on the strike sweep uh, fault, adjacent fault to the normal fault, uh, earthquake were triggered uh, with magnitude up to 5.4. As you can see here, there is uh, a series of, uh, of, uh, of earthquake between uh, magnitude 4 and, and magnitude 4.4. Uh, and the story is uh, the fluid stimulation induced an aseismic slip uh, on the fault, and the aseismic slip then uh, triggers earthquake on the on the adjacent fault, and here we have two cases: one with a fluid injection can induce seismicity, as I mentioned you in central US, and another one where the uh, fluid injection first induces a seismic slip. And for um, understanding uh, what are the process uh, to induce a slip activation along the fault, the conventional uh, model associated with fluid injection is uh, we have a borer uh, and the fluid pressure is uh, increased in a porous uh, and permeable uh, uh, formation. And if we have a fault that cross this uh, formation and the fluid pressure uh, reach, uh, reach uh, the fault, we can have uh, a reactivation of the fault and a slip activation. And in terms of uh, rock mechanics, the most um, standard classic uh, model to explain uh, fault slip activation along the fault is to use uh, a more Coulomb diagram, as you can see here. This uh, diagram is well known. Uh, it assumes that along the fault, we have a state of stress made up of uh, normal stress, a stress perpendicular to the fault, but we have also a, a shear stress uh, parallel to, to the fault. And uh, if the fluid pressure is increased along the fault, we have uh, uh, the behavior uh, illustrated here uh, in the, the Morkulon diagram. Here you have the shear stress as a function of the effective normal stress along the fault. The initial uh, stress state is a solid line. And if the fluid pressure increase, we have a reduction of the effective normal stress towards a failure envelope, the Morkulon envelope. And when the Morkulon cycle reach uh, this envelope, where uh, you can see here the right point, we have uh, a fault activation and a fault slip. But when we are uh, at this point, we don't know if the slip is seismic or aseismic. To know more about what is the uh, slip behavior and uh, if we can uh, nucleate an earthquake or no, uh, we need to know more about one parameter, which is the friction coefficient along the fault. And this friction coefficient obey to uh, a theory, uh, the theory of uh, nucleation. And uh, this theory is mainly based on the rate and state uh, friction law, uh, which is well known in, uh, in seismology and, and rock mechanics. And uh, this uh, law predicts a frictional instability, uh, that is an earthquake, when a critical stiffness along the fault is greater than the stiffness of the loading sy system. And uh, this relation is expressed, as you can see here, this is the stiffness of the, of the rock. Here, this is a critical uh, stiffness for earthquake nucleation. And this value uh, is defined as a function of the effective normal stress 
as I illustrated uh, in the slide uh, before. And we have also frictional parameter, uh, three parameter, B, A, and DCP. B and A are a constant parameter for the rate and set theory, and D sub C is a critical slip distance over which uh, the slip can be uh, seismic. And assuming this theory, uh, we have uh, three, uh, three uh, different regimes. One is uh, when uh, the uh, stiffness of the, of the system is greater than the critical stiffness. Uh, in this case, we have a, a stable uh, sliding. The slip is A seismic. We have uh, a regime where uh, K and K sub C are uh, equal. We are in a conditionally uh, stable regime. In this case, in some times, we can have an earthquake. Uh, and we have a regime here uh, where uh, we are in a, in a rate weakening uh, situation. And in this case, we can potentially have a, a, a unstable sliding that is an earthquake. And if you... Uh, take a close-up view of this relationship, uh, we can see that when the fluid pressure increases uh, in the fault, uh, according to this theory, uh, the increase in fluid pressure would reduce the critical uh, stiffness along the fault and promote stable sliding. And as you can see here, this is completely uh, uh, different from uh, the conventional theory of Morculo, uh, where most of the model considers that uh, when we reach uh, the failure envelope, uh, we have a, a seismic slip. We are, uh, in summary, uh, in a situation uh, where we are observation, uh, like in central US, where the fluid pressure increase can induce seismicity. And uh, we have also observation uh, in which uh, the fluid uh, pressure increase first induce a seismic slip. Uh, and uh, we have two theories. Morculon or uh, the uh, nucleation theory, as uh, I mentioned you previous. And from uh, this um, introduction, uh, we can uh, deduce that how fluid uh, affects the mode of sleep, seismic and versus seismic, is in fact a very open question, both from the theory and uh, from the, the observation. Uh, to, to try to, to answer this question, I have developed my group in, uh, in Nice and my collaborator. Uh, in different uh, lab uh, in Europe and, and in US, different uh, experiments uh, in the field, uh, in the laboratory. And uh, we have um, used this uh, data collected during these experiments to develop numerical modeling. And the idea is to uh, provide new measurement of fluid pressure deformation and seismicity under control condition directly in, in full zone, uh, because this is a sort of uh, gap in terms of observation. In general, we have a lot of data from uh, laboratory experiments. We have also data at the natural scale, at large scale, for example, uh, at the surface uh, along a fault. But at the intermediate scale, uh, the data are, are not uh, really available. This is why in our in our project, we have uh, investigated different scale from centimeter in the lab, decalometric scale in the field, to kilometer scale using uh, numerical uh, modeling. And I, I will start by uh, showing you uh, the results of one typical experiment we have developed uh, in the field in South of France. Uh, then uh, we have used uh, the sample collected in the fault uh, to measure the rate and state parameter and also to uh, reproduce uh, this uh, field experiment in lab apparatus that is very interesting and it was developed in uh, in Italy and then uh, using all the data we have uh, developed an hydromechanical model and now I will start by the field experiment the experiment uh, I will show show you was developed in south of France uh, near uh, near Avignon it's a, a town here uh, uh, you can see the, the red dot. Uh, and uh, for uh, this experiment, we have developed also in other underground laboratory in the world. Uh, we use a gallery located between 300 meter depth and one kilometer depth. Uh, and this gallery uh, offer us uh, a direct access to, to fall zone at depth. And as you can see here on this picture, thanks to, to the gallery, we can have an access to uh, the outcrop 
of the gallery. And if we cross a fort, we can do geology along the fort. But we can also uh, use burrows uh, through the fort to collect samples uh, in the fort and uh, on both sides of the fort. And here uh, we are uh, at 280 meter depth inside a laboratory called a Low Noise Underground Laboratory. It's an old uh, military platform. Uh, and thanks to the gallery network uh, in this underground laboratory, we have a, a direct access to Fort Zone within the uh, reservoir. And it's interesting because uh, this reservoir is a sort of analog of current uh, reservoir that is used for uh, uh, storage or energy production uh, in other place in the world, and here you 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 have a, a schematic view of the of the laboratory. The entrance is here, and uh, the length here of the gallery is about one point five kilometer, one point five kilometer. And in red, here yeah, this is a uh, the 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 faults that we uh, that we investigated uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this zone. And to, to, to develop the experiment, uh, the idea is to have burrows in different places of the fault. And the burrows are used uh, to inject water directly in the fault in order to stimulate the fault and to uh, create uh, a small seismicity with magnitude uh, around uh, minus, uh, minus four, minus two. is a very, uh, very, very small magnitude. And we induce uh, displacement along the fault uh, of the order of uh, uh, tenth uh, micron to, to one millimeter. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, the, the borers, we can also uh, fix a sensor inside the borers to measure simultaneously uh, both the fluid pressure, the fault displacement, and also the, the seismicity. And here you can see a schematic view of the experiment I will show you. We have the fault, here this is a superficial fault in a range. Uh, we have a first borer where we inject the water, uh, and I will show you a special tool we have developed to, to, to inject the water and also to measure the fault displacement. And uh, in other boroughs uh, located uh, at uh, between one meter and five meter uh, in the and around the fault, here we have a seismic sensor to uh, monitor the, the seismic activity. Before showing you the, the data, I will show you uh, the sensor we have, uh, we have developed. Um, sorry. Uh, okay. Now, first, I will show you uh, the, the another view of the geology. Uh, here, this is uh, the gallery I, I showed you. Uh, as you, as I um, mentioned, you we can uh, we can do geology along the fault because we have a outcrop in the gallery hall, and we can identify fault uh, like uh, you can uh, you can see here. Of course, uh, we are uh, in the field. Uh, the fault is a is a complex structure. Uh, it's a fault zone uh, about twenty meters thick, uh, in which we have a. a, a Main uh, slip surface, but also we have a damage zone around uh, the main uh, the main plane. Uh, the damage zone is composed of fractured rock, as you can see. Here. This is a, a simplified cross section of the of the uh, experimental zone. Here you have the depth. oh sorry for the, uh, you have the depth. Here this is a gallery floor, uh, and the fault we have tested is this one. Is a secondary fault uh, inside uh, the main uh, the main fault zone, and as I mentioned, you thanks to the borer uh, we have developed, we can collect a sample and we can uh, use this sample to do uh, lab experiments and also to do measurement along the fault. Here you can see here the fault surface we have uh, we have tested. And as I mentioned you before, first we have uh, developed uh, a special borol uh, probe to activate the fault in situ uh, during injection. Here you can see uh, the device. The device is uh, made up of uh, different ports. In black here, uh, you have uh, inflatable packers. Uh, these packers allow us to isolate a section of uh, borol in which we have uh, the fault. Uh, and uh, in this section of the borol uh, here, we can uh, we can uh, use a sensor to to measure what happens with the, the injection, and here you you, you have a close up view of uh, 
the mechanical sensor we, we have developed. Uh, here you have a fault. Uh, we inject water from uh, the tube uh, you can see here. The fluid pressure increases along the fault. And when the fault uh, deforms, uh, we have a, a relative displacement between the two holes of the fault. And as you can see here, we have a, a, we have a device uh, which is uh, made up of different parts. Here we have a mechanical anchor here and here, and the mechanical anchor fix uh, the device along the borer hole here. And between uh, the two uh, the two mechanical anchor, you can see here uh, a device which is uh, here at the center of my slide in color. Uh, the blue part corresponds to the mechanical anchor and the tube you see here in color uh, are still tube uh, in which we have a fiber optics uh, sensors uh, to measure the uh, displacement uh, of the tube. We have a 16 tube here. And when the fault uh, open or slide, we have a relative motion between the two anchors, and we can measure very accurately uh, with this uh, fiber optic sensor, the, uh, the displacement. And we have an accuracy for uh, the displacement of one micrometer, uh, one KPA for the fluid pressure. And what is also interesting with the fiber optic sensor is we can record uh, the data at high sampling rate, uh, and we can compare the hydromechanical data with the seismic data uh, that are uh, generally uh, and with this device, as I mentioned you, uh, we can inject water and measure uh, in the borehole uh, section that is isolated between the, the two anchor, both the fluid pressure and the fault, uh, the fault displacement. Okay, now uh, I will show you the experiments. Uh, this is a, a schematic view. Here, the horizontal line corresponds to the tunnel ground. Uh, we are at about uh, 15, uh, 20 meters below the, the gallery ground. And we inject water in uh, oops, in uh, in one borer. Yeah, this is the blue uh, the blue uh, the blue shape here. And uh, in borer that is uh, very close to uh, the injection borer, we have a seismometer, uh, three three component seismometer to measure the seismic uh, activity in the fault. Here. Yeah is uh, a typical um, uh, recording of the hydraulic data uh, in the injection chamber. You have here the fluid pressure in megapascal. This is a blue curve, a function of time. As you can see, uh, the experiment's duration is quite short. It's about half an hour in all. And uh, in uh, magenta here, you have the, the flow rate in liter per, per minute. And what we do, we increase the flow rate uh, step by step in the injection chamber, uh, and we measure uh, the fluid pressure increase in the chamber. And as you can see here, uh, we start from a very low uh, pressurization level to uh, a fluid pressure that reach about uh, 3.4 in PA. And when we are at uh, high uh, fluid pressure in the fault, we try to maintain this fluid pressure as long as possible in order to deform the, the fault. And one interesting point here is uh, this uh, maximum pressure is uh, an extreme pressurization for the fault because as I mentioned, you we are uh, at shallow depth and uh, such uh, such uh, pressurization uh, is high compared to the um, to the natural uh, state of stress, and we have a, a chance to to reactivate the fault. And this is what we we have obtained. Here, yeah, this is a, a similar representation. We have here uh, always uh, the fluid pressure function of time, the blue curve, and uh, here uh, you can uh, see uh, the displacement in millimeter. And we have two uh, two kind of displacement. In uh, black here, we have the fault opening, uh, and in orange here, this is a fault slip. And as you can see here, uh, when we inject uh, the fluid pressure, we increase the pressure, the pressure, and this pressure induces a fault deformation with uh, a beginning around uh, two hundred second with a fault opening that is higher to the fault slip. And at a certain point, we have a 
uh, uh, the, the slip that is uh, greater than the fault opening. You can see here that the displacement is uh, highly nonlinear with phase of acceleration and deceleration. And at the end, uh, we reach about 0 0.6 millimeter in terms of opening and 1.2 millimeter in terms of, uh, of slip. And this is the end of the experiment for, 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 for this one. And now the question is, uh, we have uh, reactivated the, the fault uh, with a clear hydromechanical coupling between the fluid pressure increase and the fault uh, displacement. And uh, the question is, uh, what is this reactivation seismic or uh, seismic? And as I, I present you uh, before in the experimental setup, we have a seismometer in borehole uh, adjacent to the, to the borehole used for, for the injection. And here, this is a typical uh, seismogram. We have a uh, measure to the, the experiment different uh, sensor uh, in the in the fault. And uh, if we compare uh, the uh, seismicity we have recorded with the hydromechanical data, this is the same uh, time uh, time window. Uh, what we obtain here, uh, we show that uh, when the fault is reactivated. Uh, around uh, 200 uh, seconds, we have no seismicity recorded uh, in the in the fault and it's surrounding during a long period. And at a certain point, when the fluid pressure is the highest in the fault and uh, the fault uh, displacement uh, has uh, accumulated along the fault, we have a seismic crisis. And what is interesting in this experiment is uh, the fluid injection first induce an aseismic slip uh, during a long period, and at a certain point, when uh, we have uh, uh, the fault uh, with uh, high pressure and, uh, and enough uh, uh, displacement accumulated, uh, the seismicity starts. And in terms of seismicity, what we observe is about uh, 80 seismic events uh, in a crisis, which is made up of two different kinds of signals. We have a combination of micro earthquake, as you can see here, with signals that are quite uh, quite uh, standard uh, for for this kind of experiment. But what we also observe is tremor-like signals that can be due to false sleep or also to to the free flow along the fault. Therefore, uh, for these experiments, uh, we have seen that uh, we have a clear hydromechanical coupling and also a partitioning between the seismic and, and seismic deformation. Now to check if we observe uh, the same behavior in different places of the fault, we have uh, run a new experiments. Uh, in, in fact, we, we, we have developed many, many experiments in, in this fault, but also in the fault worldwide, as I mentioned you. And now we have increased the seismic network uh, in the fault. This is the same fault, but we have in different play, places of the fault. We have increased uh, the seismic network on uh, the gallery ground, but also in the vertical boroughs. And as you can see here, we have about uh, uh, 38 uh, sensors with different kinds of sensors in order to cover a large spectrum of uh, seismic behavior. We have accelerometer, geophone, acoustic sensor, and, and tip meter. And we have developed the uh, same kind of uh, fluid injection now in different places of, of the fault, in secondary fault, uh, and also on fracture. And what we have observed is about uh, 200 and, um, and 50 events with magnitude uh, comprised between uh, minus 4 and, and, and uh, minus 3.5. And we also observe the seismicity developed uh, in different places uh, of the fault. And if I show you um, the same kind of data I, I, I showed you before. Here for uh, the three test, uh, I show you, yes, this is the hydromechanical data. And here you have the, the seismic data. Uh, the blue uh, line corresponds to the fluid pressure increase. Uh, as before, you have the fluid pressure here in, uh, in megapascal. The uh, orange uh, line corresponds to the fault uh, opening. And the red uh, line corresponds to the fault slip. And as I showed you in the slide before, you can see in each of the three cases, the fluid pressure increase induce a fault deformation, both a fault opening and a fault slip. And in terms of seismicity, uh, uh, 
the earthquake that we recorded are the, the green point uh, you, you you can see here. Uh, the uh, the purple line correspond to the cumulative number of uh, seismicity, and the blue line correspond to to the injected volume as you can see here. And if we uh, if we uh, focus on the seismicity, as you can see here, the seismicity uh, start uh, in these experiments after also uh, one uh, one thousand uh, and hundred uh, second of uh, of injection. That is the first part of the experiment is completely aseismic, and at a certain point we have the seismicity, and we observe a similar uh, behavior for the other experiments with different time, of course, because we are. At different places in the fault, but the behavior is the same. The fluid injection first induces an seismic slip, and then we have seismicity. And what is also interesting in this picture, if you um, focus on the uh, on this axis uh, and the, the grid point, uh, the grid point corresponds to the earthquake and the distance of the seismic events to the injection. The injection is at zero here. And uh, as you can see, uh, the first events are not close to the injection, but in general, uh, it starts at about one meter or more from the injection. For example, here it's uh, around uh, two meter, and here it's a little bit uh, uh, smaller than one meter. And it's interesting because uh, from uh, the injection to the location of the first earthquake, we have an aseismic, uh, an aseismic uh, zone. Consequently, to summarize a little bit what we have learned from uh, from uh, these in situ experiments, and uh, as I mentioned you here, I focused on one uh, one uh, one experiment site uh, in France, but we have developed the same kind of experiments in other fault worldwide in Switzerland, also in US and in Sweden and in Japan. And, and but, but what we observe uh, in these experiments is uh, first the grid pressure mainly induced a seismic motion of the fault. The seismicity uh, comes uh, in second after the seismic motion. Uh, we have a, a sort of dual behavior driven both by the fluid pressure, but also by the stress perturbation uh, associated with the seismic creep uh, along the fault. And what we also observe is uh, the seismicity is uh, located far from the injection. And this is uh, quite new uh, for uh, fluid-induced seismicity because, as I mentioned you before, most of the conventional model assumes that uh, the uh, fluid pressure triggers an earthquake when uh, we reach the failure envelope uh, in the Mokulon diagram. But in fact, it's more complex, a more complex story where we have a sequence uh, of aseismic deformation induced uh, by uh, the fluid pressure, and then we have uh, the seismicity. Uh, to know more about uh, this experiment and, and, and to have a, a more detail about uh, what happens uh, in terms of uh, mechanics, uh, as I mentioned you in the introduction, we also use the, the sample uh, of rock uh, that we collected in the field to develop uh, laboratory experiments. The experiment was developed in, in Rome, in Italy, uh, using a, a fantastic uh, a fantastic machine called Brava. Here you have a picture of the of the machine. This machine was uh, funded by an ESC project. Uh, the PI uh, is uh, um, Cristiano Colettini and, and Marco Scuderi. And uh, this, uh, at the time of the experiments, uh, this machine uh, was uh, one of the best uh, in the world to uh, develop fluid injection. Uh, in a fault and to measure both the fluid pressure and the fault displacement and also the frictional property, the A minus B and B sub C, uh, as I mentioned you in the in, in the initial slide with the, the nucleation theory. And this is what we, we have developed. We have uh, used uh, the sample we, we collected in the field. Uh, here you have a, an example of fault gouge that was collected on the fault, uh, on the fault surface. Uh, the size of the sample here is quite uh, quite small, five centimeter by five centimeter. And uh, this device uh, was, uh, was uh, used in a, in a vessel here uh, to inject the, the fluid pressure. And I will show you uh, the interior of this, uh, of this device uh, on this slide. Here you, you have a, 
a detailed view of uh, the interior of the vessel. Uh, the vessel can um, can uh, can um, reproduce the in situ stress we we measure in the field. Uh, here uh, in the uh, red red uh, square, you have a close up view of uh, the device. The device is made up of different parts, but I will focus on the main part. Uh, here uh, in uh, in gray, uh, you have a steel, a steel piston uh, in the two directions, it's a BXL apparatus. Uh, one piston is for uh, the vertical, uh, the vertical uh, uh, stressing of the, of the sample. The sample are here in brown. This is uh, the, the, the two gauge layer I will show you before in, in white, here in, uh, in brown. Uh, the first piston here uh, can allow us to uh, increase the shear stress along the, the sample. And the horizontal one here uh, allow us to uh, impose the normal stress along the fault. And here you can see in blue uh, a series of uh, conduit, and these conduit are fluid conduit to uh, allow uh, the pressurization of the sample. As you can see here, uh, we can uh, increase the pressure on the two face here of the, um, of the gouge, and we can increase the fluid pressure inside uh, the gouge. And uh, when we have fluid flow, uh, inside the gouge, we, we, we can measure the fluid pressure uh, using, uh, using another fluid code. And what is interesting uh, with this device is, of course, to inject water, uh, but we can inject water uh, and measure the fall slip and fall uh, opening also with a sampling rate of uh, 1000 Hz, which is uh, comparable with the one uh, we, we use uh, in the field. And with this uh, device, we have uh, made two things. Uh, the first one is to reproduce the fluid injection we, we develop in the field. And the second kind of experiments was to measure the rate and state friction parameter, A minus B, D sub C, at different slip velocity and for different uh, fluid pressure in the gouge in order to have a, a input parameter for numerical model that then reproduce the, the, the fluid injection experiment. But first, uh, I'm showing you uh, the fluid injection experiment. Uh, here in blue, you have uh, the fluid pressure uh, in megapascal, uh, as in the field. Uh, in uh, black here, this is the fault uh, parallel displacement, the fault slip here. Uh, here the fault slip axis is here. And in orange, uh, this is the fault, uh, the fault opening. And here we first start by imposing the uh, initial uh, normal and shear stress uh, before injection. We have an idea of this data because we have done measurement in the field and we have also developed a lot of numerical modeling to estimate uh, the state of stress in the gallery and in the fault. And then as uh, in the field, we have uh, increased the fluid pressure step by step from zero to 3.5 MPA, which is the maximum fluid pressure we, we impose in, in the field. Uh, and we compare the data. And as you can see uh, on this uh, diagram, when we increase the fluid pressure uh, along the, the, the fault gouge, what we obtain is uh, a fault uh, opening here in orange. And if you remember in the field, we have first a fault opening and then a fault slip. And here, we, we have a similar, a similar behavior. And at a certain point in the experiments, as you can see, we have a, an acceleration, a big acceleration, both of the fault opening and the fault, uh, the faults. And with this data, now we, we can do a comparison with the field data or, or over the same period. And here I uh, show you uh, the field data over uh, a period from zero to 90, uh, 90, uh, 900 uh, seconds. And uh, you can see here the fluid pressure. Of course, this is not exactly the same loading path because in the field, we are not in a, in a control condition uh, compared to, to, to the lab, which is a, a small environment. But if we compare uh, the data, um, we can see here the evolution of the fault opening and fault slip uh, can be uh, comparable and we have a an evolution that is uh, that is uh, that is similar. Of course, the absolute values are different for the reason I mentioned. Use boundary conditions are not exactly the same in nature and uh, in the lab. But what is interesting, this is the similar phase of fault opening and accelerating slip 
uh, toward uh, a high, uh, a high uh, slip uh, velocity. The second uh, aspect we have uh, we have developed, as I mentioned you, is to measure the A minus B and D sub C parameter, typically the parameter of the rate test parameter. Uh, the conventional approach is to share uh, to share the gouge. Uh, yeah, you have the, the the coefficient of friction as function of the shear slip along the fault, and then uh, where uh, we are at a steady state uh, friction coefficient in this uh, experiment to measure the rate tested parameter, uh, we develop a velocity step by increasing uh, the slip velocity along the fault, and, and then to see what happens in terms of. Uh, uh, repose the period. Here you have a typical example, uh, the, the closer view of, uh, of this, uh, this uh, velocity step. Uh, in black, this is the data, and in red, as you can see here, this is the best fit we can obtain using an uh, inversion, uh, inversion me method of uh, this set of uh, equation. Uh, I don't um, I don't detail the, this equation, but uh, uh, with this best fit, we can estimate the critical slip distance over which uh, the slip develop and the A minus B. And as I mentioned in the introduction, when A minus B is uh, positive, we have a, a rate strengthening parameter and the slip is A seismic. But when A minus B is, uh, is negative, uh, we are uh, in a potential unstable regime uh, with uh, the potential nucleation of, of an earthquake. And we have developed uh, this velocity step for different slip velocity and for different level of fluid pressure in the fault, and the idea was to measure uh, in a dry condition, then in a saturated condition at zero per pressure. Then we have increased the pressure at 1.5 MPa, which is uh, a medium, uh, a mean uh, pressure during our experiments of injection. And then we finish at three MPa, which is close to the to the highest uh, pressure uh, in our experiment. And here is what we have obtained uh, in terms of parameter. Here you can see the uh, a minus B uh, parameter uh, as function of the slip velocity. Uh, in blue and, uh, and gray, uh, gray correspond to the dry sample. Blue correspond to the uh, sample saturated uh, water at zero per pressure. And you can see uh, for different slip velocities, 0 0.1, 1, 10, and 100 micron per second, uh, these values are uh, located near a neutral behavior with a slight uh, deviation uh, around the slightly rate weakening or, or rate strengthening. And what is interesting here is when we increase the fluid pressure to 1.5 MPa and 3 MPa, uh, this is the orange square and the red uh, uh, star, you can see here a clear, uh, a clear change in terms of, uh, of behavior. For example, if we uh, focus on the red star, we can see that at low slip velocity, we have a rate weakening behavior that is a behavior uh, uh, adapted to generate a potential uh, seismic slip. But when the slip velocity increases, uh, for example, for 10 or 100 uh, micron per second, we uh, move from the rate weakening to the rate strengthening behavior, and the rate strengthening behavior uh, promote uh, a seismic slip along the fault. And this is quite uh, quite new uh, in terms of data because uh, most of the data and model uh, consider that A minus B are constant with the fluid pressure. And here we show when the fluid pressure increase, we change uh, the behavior uh, with the slip velocity from one regime to another regime. And this is quite important in terms of modeling because uh, as I mentioned you before, we uh, measure uh, in the field uh, both behavior, a seismic and seismic slip. And when we want to model uh, such a behavior, we need to include the dependence of A minus B uh, with free pressure and slip, uh, and slip velocity. And this is what we have uh, developed in a, a fully coupled hydromechanical model uh, of fluid injection and full slip. Uh, we have uh, used a 3D model in which we have a, a, a simple fault plane in terms of uh, geometry. Uh, and what we have done is uh, we have injected uh, in the model the fluid pressure we have recorded in the field. Uh, this is uh, the curve, the in-situ curve, uh, fluid pressure in megapascal as a function of time. Uh, we have used the time windows that we have uh, in the lab. 
And when we uh, inject uh, the fluid pressure in the model, we have a fluid pressure diffusion. As you can see here, this is the zone, uh, the color zone correspond to the zone of um, fluid over pressure. And what we uh, have in the model is of course the fluid pressure diffusion, but as I mentioned you, this is an hydromechanical uh, model in which we have a coupling between the fluid process and the mechanical process, and also the reverse. When we have a change in stress or deformation in the model, we have a change in uh, hydraulic property and then in, uh, in free pressure. And to do that, we need to include the effective stress change uh, in the fault. We have also include the, the stress dependent permeability, as I mentioned you in the introduction uh, of, the, of the experiments, uh, we measure the, the, both the fault opening and the fault slip. And when we have a fault opening, we have a change in uh, permeability. And when we have a, a slip, we have a change in, uh, in friction. This is why for the permeability, we have a stress dependent permeability. And for friction, we have a rate and state frictional stability. And uh, we have used the property that we measure uh, in the lab. And the idea is to use this property in the lab and to reproduce the in situ experiments to see if the lab property are consistent with what we observe uh, in the field. And this is a typical result we, we have obtained. We have run many, many uh, modeling to test the sensitivity of the, of the story. And here I will show you uh, only a uh, one uh, one of the best uh, best results. This is the fault uh, the fault slip in millimeter as function of time. The black uh, the black line uh, correspond to the experimental data collected in the field, and the red one correspond to uh, the numerical solution uh, that we obtain the best fit numerical solution. And as you can see here, uh, we have obtained this solution for a stable sliding a seismic when a minus b is dominant over. Uh, uh, for, uh, uh, when a minus b is uh, is more rate strengthening than the rate uh, weakening, and this is quite consistent with uh, our observation, uh, where first we have an a seismic slip, and then we have a seismicity. And if we uh, take a look about uh, the pressure and shear stress distribution along the fault, uh, along a profile, here you have the normalized fluid pressure as function of the uh, half length of the fault. The injection point is zero here. And uh, here you can see in color the, the time. When we inject the fluid, you can see the fluid pressure increase over time uh, until the end of the experiment. Here you have uh, the dashed line correspond to, to the pressure front. And here, this is uh, also a profile of the normalized shear stress as function of the of the length, uh, the half length of the fault. And if we compare the evolution of the shear stress with the, the one of the fluid pressure, here you can see the position of the pressure front. Inside the pressurized zone here, you can see a global reduction of the shear stress. This is quite uh, quite logical. When you increase the fluid pressure, you reduce. Uh, the effective normal sweat and uh, oops, sorry, and uh, these have uh, an impact of the on the shear stress. And uh, behind the pressure front, uh, where the fluid pressure uh, has not increased, you can see here uh, a large increase of the shear stress. Uh, the reference zero is here. We have a, a, a shear stress increase and accumulation uh, beyond the front of uh, of the fluid pressure increase, and this is uh, very uh, very important because if you are on the fault with uh, asperities that are ready to slip seismically before the the pressurization, the increase in shear stress can reactivate these uh, these uh, these asperities. And here we have a, uh, an interesting result because uh, before, as I mentioned, you most of the model assume that the seismicity occur due to fluid pressure inside the pressure zone. But here, with a good fit uh, of the field data with our model, including initially the, the lab data, uh, we show that uh, we have also a big increase of uh, uh, stress around the pressure zone. The last interesting uh, point uh, from the numerical model is also permeability. As I mentioned you, when uh, we inject uh, the fluid pressure, we reactivate the fault and the fault opens. When the fault opens, uh, we have a link uh, with, uh, with the permeability increase. And using uh, the modeling and the best fit we have obtained, we can also back calculate uh, the uh, 
the permeability evolution in the fault. And here you have a, a comparison between the fluid pressure in megapascal as function of time. Uh, this is uh, the solid line. Uh, and uh, the dot corresponds to the back calculated permeability when the fluid pressure is uh, at a stabilized step to, to, during the, the injection. You can see two periods uh, in light blue here. Uh, this is data obtained during the a seismic period, and uh, the red, uh, the red uh, correspond to the seismic period. And as you can see here, uh, the permeability is uh, expressed here in a uh, meter square. Uh, we have a, a large increase of uh, fault permeability during the a seismic part, as you can see here, fourteen uh, times uh, higher than the initial permeability. And if you remember, uh, during the aseismic part, uh, the fault opening dominates the, the slip. And when we start the, the seismic activity, we have also an increase of permeability, but this increase is uh, small compared to the one uh, we, uh, we have uh, during the aseismic part. Consequently, the change in permeability uh, during the aseismic part is important for the preparation of the of the of the seismic uh, of the seismic phase. To summarize uh, now uh, all the data and modeling and what we have learned from uh, the comparison between uh, the small scale experiment in the field in the lab, the meter scale experiment in the field, and the model, uh, we have shown that uh, the increase in fluid pressure uh, in the fault here. You, you you have a schematic of the fault. This is a ball. The so increase in fluid pressure induce uh, a pressurized zone here where we have uh, a fault opening with permeability increase and a an seismic slip uh, with no seismicity. And around uh, this, uh, this pressurized zone, uh, we have here uh, in red a zone uh, where the stress is perturbed by uh, the aseismic slip uh, propagation. And if we have asperities that are ready to slip uh, seismically before the injection, the stress perturbation uh, linked to this uh, aseismic slip propagation can increase uh, the shear stress along this asperity, and this asperity can break seismically. And this is completely consistent with the numerical model I, I showed you before with the zone of shear stress uh, accumulation, but also with the location of the seismic event in the experiment, where the seismic event are located far from the uh, fluid, uh, the fluid uh, injection. And this model is uh, consistent with observation at larger scale. Uh, here you have two examples. One I showed you before, this is a Brawley geothermal site in, uh, in Southern California. And here, uh, this is uh, uh, in Canada, uh, an operation of hydraulic uh, fracturing in the Alberta Basin. And uh, in these two cases, uh, it was observed that the fluid injection can induce a seismic slip, which is then trigger earthquake. As I mentioned you in the introduction for this example, the a seismic slip uh, along a normal fault trigger earthquake with magnitude up to 5.4 uh, during uh, this, uh, this uh, fault simulation. And in this example here, uh, we have a similar behavior where uh, the borehole here increased the fluid pressure in a shale formation uh, by hydraulic fracturing. The fluid pressure uh, reach, reaches uh, a fault here and the fluid pressure increase along the fault and induce uh, a fault creep along the fault and uh, as you can see here, uh, observation showed that the seismicity is located both along the fault and also in a, an adjacent fault here below the reservoir. And uh, the scenario here uh, is the aseismic slip propagation uh, trigger the seismicity uh, above the zone of uh, hydraulic stimulation. And here we have uh, two uh, two independent uh, examples that uh, uh, show that our model is uh, is quite. Our model at small scale is consistent with what is observed at large scale. To, to finish my talk, uh, some conclusion. Uh, this study showed that the coupling between false slip and free flow promote stable sliding uh, in, a, in a fault uh, during fluid injection. This is the first uh, um, part of the of the fault uh, of the fault activation then the seismicity is probably triggered indirectly by the fluid injection due to the loading of non-pressurized fault patch uh, by uh, the seismic 
uh, creep propagation. Uh, we have also demonstrated uh, that the false slip uh, induced by fluid injection at the decametric scale in the field is quantitatively consistent with, with what we observe in terms of false slip and frictional property at small scale in the laboratory. We also showed that the increase in free pressure first induced an aseismic uh, uh, slip and fault opening with a, a big role of the fault uh, uh, of the fault permeability enhancement together with a rate weakening behavior. But as the fluid pressure continue to increase in the fault, then the friction move to a, a rate strengthening uh, behavior that uh, promote an aseismic slip. And finally, for future modeling, uh, we propose that considering this interaction. Uh, with new friction, including uh, both the effect of the fluid pressure increase, but also the rate of change uh, of a friction parameter may help to better anticipate the fault response to fluid injection, uh, and also uh, to, to, to use this kind of new model to improve uh, monitoring uh, techniques of uh, induced uh, induce seismicity. I would like to thank you again for, for the invitation uh, to, to be with you today, and I will be happy to, to answer questions. Thank you very much, Frederick. It was very, I'm sure that many uh, people were find it novel since we don't, we are not getting exposed so much for, uh, um, for this kind of subject. So I open, I open the, the podium for questions from the audience, from our students. Don't be shy. Nobody is asking. If you're interested, I can send you uh, the paper I cited in the presentation and also the yeah, presentation. Yeah, I will, I will distribute it for the students. I do have a question. What, uh, what do you think will, um, would happen if the fluid is uh, what will happen to the slip, basically a seismic slip, if the fluid is different. Let's say we're talking about a fluid which is water, saline water, oil, um, you know, different kind of fluids. How does it influence? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. So far, we have uh, mainly tested water. Uh, and very, very recently, one month ago, we have uh, made our first experiments with, uh, with CO2. Uh, and we know that the behavior is, uh, is different, uh, mainly due to the compressibility of the, of the, of the uh, fluid we use. Uh, of course, it's not a surprise because from a, a theory and numerical model, we know that if we inject pure water or water with gas or, or pure gas, uh, we can have a, we can have a different uh, different hydraulic response. And now we are in the process of analyzing the data. But the first analysis shows that the the, the slip uh, behavior and opening at are are, are different in terms of a characteristic time and magnitude uh, because the compressibility of the of the of the fluid is not uh, is not the same, and now we we have to 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 understand more uh, more what happens when we use different fluid uh, to to have a better view of the large spectrum of what kind of sleep behavior we can have. Um, but for sure, uh, it's not exactly the same uh, the same shape. But we have the same story. When we inject, first we have an aseismic part, and then we have seismicity. It is similar for the same uh, for the same fluid, uh, but we don't have exactly the same uh, the same history uh, in terms of uh, of loading. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Somebody else has a question? Well, definitely people were writing in the chat that if you can send the paper, it will be great, uh, Frederick. Okay. Yeah, I can send you the paper. And if you want, I can also send you the slide. Okay. Okay. I will distribute it for the students. Okay, thank you very much. And I think uh, we should uh, close today because it's already a little bit late. So again, thank you very much. And I hope uh, I hope to see you in person. Me too, me too. Thank you very much for the invitation. It was a great pleasure. And uh, see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.